Okay, Morav Rabotai, welcome to another Wednesday night class in Har Lebanon, Avenue S Corner of East 9th. Every Wednesday night at 8 p.m., welcome to our anytime viewers and listeners, J-Root viewers and listeners. We are studying Parashat Vaishlah, and we are studying Parashat Vaishlah, Le'alun Shmat Yishak Ben Lin Daruwa Hashem Tenehinu Bagan Eden. As I was putting my kids on the bus today, and of course, the bus, when they come to pick up the kids, they have their stop sign out. And there was a lady trying to squeeze in between the cars parked and between the bus. And she made it through. And I ran after her and I knocked on her window. I said, what are you doing? Don't you see the stop sign? There's kids going on the bus. It's very dangerous. I'm sorry, I didn't see the stop sign. I'm sorry. Okay, don't make a big deal out of it. Don't make a big deal out of it. There's children going on the bus. I didn't see the stop sign. Okay. In all fairness, okay, maybe she didn't see the stop sign. But it got me to think... In life, sometimes we get so many stop signs in our life, so many roadblocks, so many signs for us to slow down, to stop, and to rethink what you're doing. Unfortunately, many times we don't get it. In this week's parasha, the one who did get it, that got the biggest lesson of his life was Yaakov Abinu. As we know, these parashiyot are all to teach us how to work on our midot, on our character traits. And we learned about Yitzhak Abinu in Parashat Toledot that no matter what the Yisra Ra wants to do to you, to bring you down, you always have to uh, overcome and not give in. We learned in Parashat Vayetzeh last week about Yaakov Abinu and the different uh, obstacles that he faced, whether it was between his ladies and Rahel Imenu, the obstacle that she faced because she was disgraced and she was uh, embarrassed and she didn't give up. In this week's parasha, we have the same thing with Yaakov Abinu, however, in a trait that we all have to work on. And I don't know, I can't say this in certainty, but I feel that many people, big or small, have this bad midara'ah. And we'll see what it is. The Debre Israel says, Ma'ase abot siman lebanim, and that's the motto that we have throughout Sefer Bereshit. Whatever happened to the forefathers is for us to understand and to learn from. And he says, what happens? Now Yaakov Abinu, he's away from his parents for a very long time. He finally wants to go back to his father Yitzhak and to Ribka. He still doesn't know that on the way back, Ribka Emenu passes away. He never gets to see his mother again. When Deborah Meneket Ribka passes away, now she says at the same time, the Ramban also brings it, at the same time, Ribka also passes away. So he's on the way back to see his parents. What does he do? He stops. He sends messengers. Malachim. Malachim mamasha, she says. It's real angels. He sends messengers to Isav. Now mind you, Yaakov Abinu is traveling from Haran. Now Haran is in the Safon. He's traveling down. He's going to where? To Be'er Sheba. Right. That's where Yitzhak Abinu lived. And Isav is all the way on the other side. In the Negev. He's all the way down south. And he has no business of going into Eretz Israel. He's complacent, he's happy, he's comfortable in his area. Yaakov Abinu sends him messengers to tell him, hey, I'm on the way back home. But just to let you know that you thought that I stole the Barachot from you, the only thing I have is one sheep, one donkey, one ox. I don't have so much. So if you're jealous, still jealous of the Barachot, nothing to be jealous of. Isav hears that Yaakov Abinu is on the way back home, and we know what happens. He sends up 400 people, and the whole mifgash, the whole meeting between Yaakov and Isav, that we know. But the pasuk is very strange when it says, Vayashubu elav malachim The malachim come back to Yaakov Abinu. Now, what's the pshat of the pasuk? Yaakov Abinu sends the malachim, they go, Isav, they see what's happening. They come back and they tell Yaakov, he's coming to greet you. Isav, your brother. However, he's coming back to greet you with 400 men. That's a pshat of Asuk. Vayashubu, they came back. But the word Vayashubu means, it doesn't say Vayabu'u. It says Vayashubu, which means they returned. The Torah could have just said Vayabu'u elav malachim. They came back. Vayabu'u also means they came or they came back. What is the meaning of the word Vayashubu? So the Debrei Israel says, when Yaakov Abinu sent the Malachim to Isav, and it says in the Pasuk they returned, 
It's a connotation to teach us, Kemo Shehayu. They came back the same way he sent them. What does that mean? He paved the road for his children after him. He says, you understand what I mean. He sent the Malachim, pure Malachim, no sin. And I know you'll ask me, but Malachim don't sin. I'll get to that. They went to Isav, and they saw Isav, they saw the people surrounding Isav, they saw the rish'ut, the evilness in Isav, but they came back to Yaakov Abinu unharmed. Nothing happened to them. They came back the same way that they left. So Yaakov Abinu is teaching us over here, the Torah is teaching us, be careful. In life, no matter what level you get to, no matter how high you go on the on the in the rungs in life, make sure you always go back to your creator the same way he sent you down to this world. And we'll explain. But just because I want to answer and address the question that you're going to ask me about the Malachim don't sin, the Malachim do sin. When they come down to this world, they do sin. When they dress in the form of a human being, they have that yes, and yes, they do sin. We see it from the Malachim in Sedom. The Malachim in Sedom told Lot, we came to destroy Sedom. Hashem said, oh, you came? You sinned. You didn't come. I sent you. Because you sinned and you said, we came, you stay down here and go up only when Yaakov Inu either has the dream or now, in last week's parasha, actually, when it says that Yaakov Abinu came and he met new angels. And what happened? Some of Farshim said he met the same angels that were here. And then he said, now it's your time to go. So past a hundred and somewhat years, because they said, we came. Because we came. Another example I'll give you is that by Yetziat Misraim, or before that, by Makat Bechorot, it said that Hashem had to come down and kill the Bechorot. Kill the firstborn. Why? Some Mefarshim, based on the Zohar, say that even a Malach, if he was to come down to Mitzrayim, because the Mitzrayim was the epitome of Rish'ut, was the center of all Tum'ah, impurity in the world, even a Malach can be affected. So yes, the Malachim, when they come down to this world, in some way they can be affected. But we'll go back... Of course, of course, that's the story in Bereshit, yes, of course. Shalom Alechem. How are you, Mr. Muhaddib? Thank you for joining, thank you for joining. So we go back to what we were saying. They came back to Yaakov, the Torah is teaching us a very valuable lesson. Make sure that when you come down to this world, you return your neshama back to Hashem the same way He sent it down here. And we'll see exactly what we are talking about. The Debreyah Haskil, he says, Yaakov Abinu now is praying to Hashem. First of all, he gets ready for three things. La milhama, la doron, ve la tefila. He gets ready for war. He gets ready for a gift. He sends a gift to Isa, 580 different species of animals. And he also is mukhan la tefila. He also starts praying to Hashem. And in his prayer, he says, Katon ti mikola hasadim, mikola emet. I'm so humbled by all the kindness you have showered me. Not only that, in order to get to Haran, leaving Israel, in order to get to Haran, I had to cross the Yarden. And the only thing I had to cross the Yarden was Makli, my stick. And now, Baruch Hashem, I have sheep, Cattle, poultry, the works. I have it, everything. Nine, everything, the nine yards. But he says, I came here, meaning to Haran, only with my stick. What is the remez, Rabotai? Why does Yaakov Abinu have to tell us, I only came with my stick? Fine, so don't even say it. Just say, I came empty handed, and now Baruch Hashem, I have everything. What is the meaning of the word bimakli? Obviously, bimakli, pshat means. My stick. But what's the remez? 
Rabotai de Debrei Haskel says, Bemakli is the same numerical value as Yaakob. Yaakob numerical value is 182. Right, Nuri? 182, I believe. Yes. Bemakli is also 182. What does it mean? I left as a Yaakov and I came back as a Yaakov. I did not change my persona, my attitude, my whole look, my whole outlook at life. I am the same Yaakov. And he continues with Dibra Yaskar. He says, What does that mean? The same Yaakov leaving to Haran and coming back from Haran, going back to his father's house. Now, Yaakov Abino, when he sends a Ma'achim to Isav, he says, This is the message. Few words. What are the words? Im Laban Garti. I lived with Laban. What does Isav care where he lived? Isav is out to kill him. Do I care if you lived with Laban or you lived with, with uh, the grocery guy? I, what do I care exactly? So Rashi, right away, Rashi says, Im Laban Garti Shene Perushim. Two meanings. The first one, Garti, Velona Aseti Sar Vetoshab Elager. I lived over there, but I'm still a Ger. I, mean, I didn't make it like it was my town, my city, my country. I just went, I was just dwelling over there. I didn't make myself a resident over there. That's one perush, that's one meaning of Rashi. Garti lashon ger. I only dwelled over there, but I'm coming back to my real town, which is Er Israel. That's one perush. Tabara her, another meaning. Garti betariag mitzvot shamarti. Garti is numerical value 613. So Yaakov Abinu is sending a remez to Isaf, telling him, Garti, but I kept the 613 mitzvot. Again, why does Isaf care if Yaakov Abinu keeps the 613 mitzvot? How many mitzvot does Isaf have under his belt? As far as we know, two. Kibbut Abvaim and living in Eretz Israel. All the years Yaakov Abinu was not living in Israel. So as far as we know, I'm sure he had more. But as far as we know, he only had two. So Yaakov Abinu is telling him, oh, be careful from me, because I want to let you know one thing. Number one, I'm coming back to my real town, my real homeland, which is Israel, and I was only a ger by Haran. Number two, I kept all the 630 mitzvot. Hazaku Baruch Yaakov Abinu. What, is it, what does it matter to Isav? And not only that, the Debrei Haskel says something amazing. He says, the two meanings are sotrim ehad lasheni. The two meanings are contradicting one another. Why? The first meaning where Yaakov bin was only a ger and only a dweller, it shows anava. It shows modesty, a humbleness. I didn't make myself out to be anything. I'm still the same Yaakov Abinu. I was a ger when I went. I'm a ger when I came back because I'm coming back to my real town. Shows anava, humbleness. That's one meaning. The second meaning where he says, I kept all the 613 mitzvot, shows arrogance. Isav, I have nothing to be afraid of you. I kept all the 630 mitzvot. So Rashi's explanation of this pasuk is a little bit hard to comprehend. One meaning, one perush is anava, humbleness. The other one is arrogance. That's what the Brei Haskel says. So listen to what he says over here. He says, Ve'yesh lomar, koto merun ladoni la'esav. Yaakov Abinu does not say, this is the message you should send to Esav, to my master, to Esav. The Brei Haskel says something so beautiful. He says, ladoni lehud ve'esav lehud. My master, Esav, no. This is what you should say to my master, and this is what you should say to Isav. It's not my master Isav. Pshat, of course, is Ladoni la Isav, to my master Isav. But if we dig deep and know the name is, it's two different meanings. Ladoni la Isav. To my master, I have something to say, and I have something to say to Isav. Listen what he says. Ladoni, Kama, and la Isav. Listen what he says. Ladoni to my master, Zeha Kadosh Baruchu. That's Hashem. Ribbono Shel Olam, God Almighty. La Isav, because obviously Isav. Ve'a'inyan, yesh lo markach. And this is how we can explain this pasuk and try to make some light out of Rashi's two perushim. Hinei Yaakob Abinu, hitkin atzmo lishlosha debarim. Yaakob Abinu prepared for three things, as we said, milhama, war, gift, and prayer. 
ואחד מהם הוא התפילה, and one of them was to pray to Hashem. והנה מתיקוני התפילה, and in order for your תפילה, for your prayer to be answered, רבותיי, הוא הכנעה בחינת תפילה לעני. You have to be humble in front of Hashem. If you stand in prayer, and for a second you say, Hashem, you must answer my tefillah, because look at the mitzvot I have performed. That's a surefire way of your tefillah to not be answered. A hundred percent. You have to make yourself like an ani, like a pauper, like a poor person. I have nothing. The only thing I have is my mouth, my supplications, my tehina, my request. Please, Hashem, answer me. You have to be humble. והיינו כמאמר חכמינו בגמרא, מסכת סוטה דף ה. לאיזה גמרא? מסכת סוטה, טרקטד סוטה, דף ה, פייג' פייב. אמר חזקיה, חזקיה טורס. אין תפילתו של אדם נשמעת, אלא אם כן משים ליבו כבשר. Your תפילה, your prayer will only be answered if you make yourself like flesh. What does that mean? He brings a פסוק. שנאמר, והיה מדי חודש בחודשו, יבוא כל בשר להשתחוות. Every ראש חודש, we have to come and subjugate ourselves to Hashem and make ourselves like a בשר. It does not only mean ראש חודש, it means every time you're standing in תפילה, in front of Hashem, make yourself like flesh. What does that mean, make yourself like flesh? So Rashi says, כבשר שהורך. בשר, if you get a nice piece of meat, it's soft. If you go to the butcher and this meat is hard, don't buy that piece of meat. It has to be soft. Velo ka'e ben shehu kashe. How are you, Sion? Velo ka'e ben shehu kashe. Be careful not to be, not to have a heart of stone. Have a heart of basar, of flesh. Why? What can we do with flesh, Rabotai? We can mend it. We could shape it. If it's stone, you can't do anything with it. So now when you're standing in front of Hashem with the heart of flesh, you're saying, Hashem, I don't know if you will answer my tefillah or not, but you can mend, you can shape me any way you want. Leishtahavot, what does that mean? Subjugate yourself to Hashem in prayer. Leitpalel, to pray. Otam shehem basar yabo'u v'itpalelu. If you have a heart of flesh, if you make yourself like flesh, you can pray. Ki hem nishma'im lefanav. Because Hashem listens to them. And this is the point. This is the point of our class. Aval gase haruach lo yavo'u. But if you're haughty, if you have haughtiness, arrogance, if you have ga'ava, do not stand in prayer. Because like we said, for sure Hashem will not listen to your tefillah. This is what he said. This is what he says. So what is, how does he, how does he shtim, or how does he connect the whole question that we asked? ועלכן, and therefore, כשהתקין יעקב אבינו עליו השלום עצמו לתפילה, when יעקב אבינו is standing in front of prayer right now, who is he standing in front of prayer? Not in front of עיסב, in front of השם. דיבר בלשון הסובל שני משמעות. He said a prayer which means two different meanings. לאדוני בכיוון אחד ולעיסב בכיוון אחד. In my prayer, I'm concentrating, or I'm, uh, how do you say, I'm, how do you say, I'm focusing, thank you. Why can't I get that word? I'm focusing my prayer, the same prayer, one to Hashem, one to Isav. How? Ladoni, when I pray in front of Hashem, Hainu HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Beruach Nemucha VeHachna'a. I pray in... Because I'm, I'm hachna'a. I subjugate myself in front of Hashem. In humbleness. Im laban garti Hashem. I only live with laban. Lo na'aset yisar v'chashub el lager. I'm nothing. I lived by laban. I've been with us yet. Maybe I had a lot of money, but that was not my house. I didn't want to live there. I only had to live there because of the conditions that I was going through. El lager b'chinat tefila le'hani. I'm in front of you, Hashem. I'm subjugating myself to you, Hashem. I'm humble in front of you, Hashem. But to Isav, but to Isav, but to Isav, I'm speaking to him in arrogance. In what kind of arrogance? Im laban garti ve taryag mitzvot shamarti belo tenufal arshaim. To a rasha, to a person that's trying to bring you down, telling you, 
you don't mean anything, you didn't pray enough, you didn't learn enough. No. To Isaf, to Arasha, you should not subjugate yourself to him. Subjugate yourself only to Hashem. Have humbleness only in front of Hashem. But to a person that's bringing you down, have Gaserua, have Gaava. Like by David Amelech, it says, Ve'ikbah libo bedarche Hashem. David Amelech was not known to be holy. But when it came time that he had to show his adversaries or the enemies or people that were bringing him down, telling him, David, what do you amount to? You can't even build a Beit HaMikdash. Who are you? The Jews don't even like you. Your own son wants to kill you. Your wife doesn't like you. Your father-in-law wants to kill you. Who are you, David? He didn't subjugate himself to his enemies. He rose up. He says, no, no, no. Now it's time to be arrogant. So Yaakov Abinu was never arrogant a day in his life. But when it came time to speak to Isav, telling Isav, I have nothing to fear from you. I have nothing to be afraid of you. Because the Torah that I learned, that's my protection against you. In front of Hashem, I understand. Ladoni, I understand. Nemucha, Anava. In front of Isav, no, 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 no. Gaseruah. Now we understand that she's two meanings. They're not contradicting, they're not contradicting. They're not contradicting one another. They make perfect sense. One is talking to Hashem and one is talking to Aisav. The point of the class Rabotai is the Midah Ra'ah that sometimes we're all afflicted by and that's the Midah of Ga'ava. Now Ga'ava doesn't mean that you have money in the bank. Ga'ava doesn't mean you have a nice sports car you're driving around. No. Or a fancy house or anything fancy. No. Sometimes, unfortunately, we show off on things that are so foolish. So foolish. Sometimes, if we, if we introspect and see, admit, what do we have to show off? We have nothing compared to the next guy or the other guy compared to the next guy. We really don't have anything. And comparing, comparing to the big picture, the big scope in front of Hashem, what do we have to show off? But sometimes it's so trivial. We show off with such mere things. It, it, sometimes we could laugh at ourselves if we, if we ever record ourselves and we show off or, or, or we record ourselves how sometimes we treat other people and we bring people down because you're not giving me some respect. Sometimes it's so funny and we could laugh at ourselves. Yaakov Abin was telling us, I have so much to show off. I have so much. But when it comes to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, when it comes to Ladoni, when it comes to my master, who am I? Hashem, I left with my stick, I'm coming back with my stick. I'm the same Yaakov that came to Haran, same Yaakov coming back from Haran. Your neshama that Hashem has sent you here down with, make sure when you send the neshama back to Hashem, make sure it's the same neshama. What do I mean? Obviously don't mean, I obviously don't mean that make sure the neshama didn't learn any Torah. Of course I mean learn Torah. But as the saying goes, Tob Shem Mishem and Tob. In the end of the day, people will only remember you by your name, by your good deeds, by your actions. They won't remember how much money you had in the bank or what kind of car you drove, maybe for a few days. But that's not what goes in the scrapbook. After 120 years, when people come to pay respect, they don't show them in the album. They don't show them, oh, look at the car that he used to drive. Oh, look at the fancy house that he had. Look at the people surrounding him. No. Look how many organizations he helped. Look how many people he helped. Look how many Shaure Torah he went to. Look, how, look, he used to go to the Vatikin Minyan early in the morning. On that you can show off. But to show off with other things, they're so superficial. There's nothing to show off. That's the great lesson Yaakov Abinu is teaching us. I'm the same Yaakov, ki makli, makli numerical value 182 Yaakov. I'm the same Yaakov. And he says something else. I'm worried from Isav. But why are you worried from Isav? We just established that you have nothing to worry about. So why are you worried from Isaf? So Rashi says, maybe I had some sins along the way which knocked down all my merits and I have no merits to come back to Isaf with. Okay. Well, what's the, what's the remiss in this? 
Listen what Yaakov says. Oto, I'm afraid of him. Why am I afraid of him? Lest he come and he hit me. It's superfluous. I'm scared of him because maybe he will come and kill me. Just say, I'm afraid maybe he will come and kill me. What is this word oto? So the rabbis say, this word oto has nothing to do with Isav. Peniavo, peniavo, what does peniavo mean? Lest he come. I'm worried maybe he will come. Maybe who will come? Isav? No. Oto and peniavo is not talking about Isav. It's talking about Yaakov Abinu is worried. Maybe I have some impression on me of haughtiness and that will bring me down. Listen how it all works out. We have a pasuk in Parashat Ekev. What does the word say? Pen tochal vesabata. Lest you eat, be satiated, build nice houses, have a lot of money. What will happen after that? You will be haughty and end up. Forgetting Hashem. Not only forgetting Hashem, but forgetting the Torah that Hashem has given you. So the rabbis say, when Yaakov Abin was saying, Ki anochi oto penyavo, oto is not talking about Isav. Listen to the pasuk. Ki anochi oto penyavo. Connect the oto to the words penyavo. I am worried Oto, who's oto? The word pen, the word maybe, the word lest. That's what I'm worried about. What am I worried about? It. Pen yavo vehikani im albanim. I'm worried that the haughtiness of the pasuk and parashat ekev. Be careful not to be so haughty and to have so much money, and then you'll forget Hashem. I'm scared that that word pen, that word maybe, will come and afflict me. And start playing around with my mind, playing mind games. Yaakov, you have nothing to worry about, Isav. Your Torah will protect you. You have so much money, you could send him so many gifts. Nothing to worry about, Yaakov. You know, that's, that's exactly what I'm worried about. Isav himself, I'm not worried about Isav. Who's, who cares about Isav? I'm worried about the haughtiness. Maybe that will bring me down. Listen to, to the words of the rabbis. Yesh lomar hamila oto, the word oto, he nimshechet vedabuka lemata el milat pen. Oto is pen, together. Veratzalo Mari Yaakov, Kare Anochi Oto, pen. That word pen. Where do we have that word pen also? Kriyat Shema. What are we saying, Kriyat Shema? Hisha Merulachem, pen. Yiftel Lebabchem. Pen means maybe. Make sure that maybe doesn't play tricks in your mind. What does that mean? Saying that Kriyat Shema. To wake up early in the morning. I have to make sure I read Kiryat Shema by a certain time, 8.20, 8.30, 8.40. It always changes. What do I need with all that? I say Kiryat Shema on my terms. I say Kiryat Shema when I want to say Kiryat Shema. If I want to sleep late on Shabbat morning, and please, whoever calls Shabbat Saturday, I don't know where they got it from. Shabbat is called Shabbat. I don't say, I'll see you on Saturday morning in Shul. There's no Saturday. It's called Shabbat. We have Friday, okay? But Shabbat is Shabbat. It's not called Saturday. I'll see you Saturday morning in Shul. It's not even Saturday. So Shabbat, I say, oh, Shabbat, I want to sleep late. Who cares? It's Shabbat morning. Let me sleep late. No, be careful. Pen, pen, yiftel The pen will play mind games with you. The same way Yaakov Abinu's word of that pen. Pen, yavo vehikani. The word pen is going to come and play mind games with my mind. And what will happen? I'll forget all my, I'll, I'll lose all my merits, I'll lose all my Torah. Because what do we, what do we know? When there's Ga'ava in a person's life, Hashem can't dwell in his life. As we know the famous saying, We can't live, we can't be on the same plane, we can't be on the same plateau. We can't live together, Hashem says. If you're holy and I'm holy, we can't be. I'm the only one who could be holy, Hashem says. So if you're holy, if you have holiness in your life, Arrogance in life, Hashem says, no, 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 no. You forget all your Torah, you lose all your merits. That's what Yaakov Binu scared Rabotai. That Semah Sadiq says, look at the word Makli. Makli means my stick. My stick. Makli, my stick. But how do you say stick in Hebrew? Makil. 
He says, Makel Sofe Tebot is the last letters of Abraham is a mem. Yitzhak Kof, Yisrael, Yaakov, Yani Yisrael, Lamed, Makel. Yaakov Abinu saying the same as Sadiq says, if I have anything to be holy about, the only thing I have to be holy about is that I come from a lineage of Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. I have Zechut Avot, Rabbotai. That's the only thing a Yehudi can lift up his head and say, Baruch Hashem, I have Zechut Avot in my life. That's the only thing he could be holy about. That's the only thing he could have arrogance. Baruch Hashem, look at the great forefathers that I have. Not Thomas Jefferson or whatever his name is. What's his name, Thomas Jefferson? Or Edison or Washington or Madison. No. Abraham, Yitzhak, Yaakov, Israel. Rahel imenu, Sarah imenu, Ribka imenu, Le'ah imenu. Look at, look, at the, look at the beautiful, lustrous family that I come from. That's the only thing he could be holy about. Ki ben makli, makel, sofet about Abraham, Yitzhak, Israel. That's the only thing he could be arrogant about. And Yaakov Abinu says, Katonti mikola hasadim, as we mentioned earlier, Hashem, I really don't deserve the kindness you're giving me. I really don't deserve it. I left with my stick. Eliphaz came, he took all my clothes, he took all my money. I had nothing. I came to Rahel, I cried. I kissed Rahel and I cried right afterwards because I had nothing to show. I'm coming to marry her and I have no nadunya, I have nothing to show her. Usually you send flowers, you send a, a nice bracelet or a nice whatever, takhshit, nice piece of jewelry. I have nothing to show. Hashem, but now look how much I have. The 580 different animals that he sent to Isaac didn't make a dent in Yaakov Abinu's what he really had. Because Yaakov Abinu Baruch Hashem had a lot. And this is all because Hashem saw his suffering. You changed me a hundred times. I said I wanted it spotted. You said no problem. You ended up taking the spotted for yourself. I said I wanted the line. You ended up taking the line for yourself. You know what? I can't deal with you, Laban. Until Hashem saw the suffering that Yaakov Abinu had to go through, and Hashem gave Yaakov Abinu so much. And not only that, look at the Barakha Laban gained. Laban didn't have any boys. When Yaakov Abinu came, bam, he had boys. Laban didn't have anything. What happened? When you came, wow, 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 look how much you had, look how much you had. If Laban had that much, imagine how much Yaakov had. That's why he wanted to leave Laban. Uh, I, I, you know, a hundred times he tricked me, I don't want him to trick me anymore. Let me go back to my father's house. But what is he saying over here? I really, Hashem, I don't deserve it. Not only Yaakov, we don't deserve any, Really? We don't deserve anything Hashem is giving us. We really don't. How can we, uh, how can we equate what we're doing to Hashem to what Hashem gives us? As we always mention the Midrash, that says, If a person comes and says, Hashem, true, I just bought this door and the threshold and everything for $5,000, but I'm bringing a mezuzah to it that cost 18 by Mekora Sefarim. Bizayon, it's a disgrace. Hashem says, excuse me? Excuse me? Hashem, you know, at least I'm putting a mezuzah by my door. I'm better than a lot of people. They don't put a mezuzah. Hashem says, excuse me? Who gave you the door for you to put the mezuzah on? If you can find anything that you have given me before, I have given you, fine. But everything that we can think of, Hashem has preceded us. Hashem, look, look, look at the great mitzvah I'm doing, a brit milah for my son. Yeah, but who gave you the brit milah? Hashem, look, look, I'm, I'm wearing seat. Look, Hashem is a great mitzvah. Yes, but who gave you the body? Who gave you, Baruch Hashem, the health to be able to put seat on? So there's nothing you could actually precede Hashem because He preceded you in everything. So therefore, Yaakov is saying, Katonti Mikola Hasidim. I'm so small. Everything you have given me, you shared me so much kindness. So listen to what the Gemara says. There's a Gemara Masechet Hulin Dav Petet. This is brought down by the Imre Pinchas of Kortz. He says, Atem HaMe'at, Am Yisrael is the Me'at. In number, in size, what do we compare to the nations of the world? We're nothing. But what does that mean? Ke Atem HaMe'at, you're small. HaMe'atim Atzmechem. When you lower yourself, when you make yourself small in anava, in modesty, in humbleness, when I give you, when I give you, 
הוא מכיר יותר בגדולת השם ושפל בעיני עצמו ביותר. You know, over here it tells us something so beautiful. The more Hashem gives you, the more you have to be humble, not the other way around. Because if you're saying Hashem is giving me so much and so much and so much, I have to subjugate myself even more to you, Hashem, because look how much you have given me. That's what Yaakov Rinu is saying. Katonti mikol hasadim. I never for a minute ever think that I should use all this to be arrogant or to show off in front of everyone. No. Katonti. As much as you have given me, that even caused me to be even less and less and to lower myself in front of you, Hashem. And he brings that from the Zohar. Listen to what the Zohar says. David the Melech, alav shalom. David the Melech. When it came time to lead his country, to rule, he showed off a little bit. Why? Because when Hashem gives you power, it's Hashem giving you power. If you abuse the power, it's as if you're abusing Hashem. As if, because Hashem has given it to you. So if Hashem gave the Melech Malchut, he knows it comes from Hashem and he has to use it to the full capacity. So he has to make people afraid of the Melech. Ve'amar limshiho le David. I am the Mashiach Hashem. I have I have what to be holy about because Hashem has chosen me to be the Melech. Aval dechad have ben sonav ubara atra hava ma'i garme ki ani ve'ebion ani. It's funny because you look at the Tehillim. David the Melech many times he uses words or uses terms. That he yeah, have so much haughtiness and have so much arrogance. But then he says on the other hand, I'm a pauper, I'm nothing, I have nothing. David, make up your mind. Either you're a pauper or you have what to be haughty about. The Imre Pinha says, it's exactly what we said before. It depends where you are. It depends where you are. If you are around people, you have nothing to show off about. You have nothing to be arrogant about, haughty about, because you have nothing. It's Hashem has given it to you. When it's in front of Hashem, Malchut, like Yaakov bin Uladoni, then you can be holy. When it comes time to pray right now, as we said, be careful. Don't stand up in prayer in arrogance. Hashem wants basad. He wants something to shape out of you. Stand in front of Hashem as a pauper. As a person that has nothing. That's what David Melech is teaching us, the Ibn Hass says. That's what Yaakov Abinu is teaching us. So what happens now? Yaakov Abinu fights with the Malach, right? And the Malach calls him Yisrael. He says, Lo ya'amir shimcha Yaakov ki im Yisrael. From now on, your name is not Yaakov, your name is Yisrael. However, when Hashem himself comes to give the Barakat to Yaakov, Hashem also calls Yaakov Abinu Yisrael. But Hashem says, "Vayomer lo Elohim shimcha Yaakov, lo yikare shimcha od Yaakov ki im Yisrael yeshemecha vayikra et shemo Yisrael." Hashem says, "Your name is Yaakov. From now on, they won't call you anymore Yaakov. They call you Yisrael." Fine, but Hashem, why do you have to tell me my name right now is Yaakov? I know my name. Follow along on Shabbat in the Aliyah. Hashem says, your name right now is Yaakov. Not like the, the, the Malach. Malach asks, the Malach of Isav, Sarosh of Isav asks Yaakov, what's your name? He says, Yaakov. He says, okay, from now on your name is no longer Yaakov. That we understand. Over here Hashem tells Yaakov, oh, by the way, your name is Yaakov. And it won't be, you won't be called Yaakov anymore. You won't be named Yaakov anymore. Your name will be Israel. Hashem, we know his name is Yaakov. The Sefer Abu Lat Yisrael of Kojnitz says something so beautiful. He says, never forget you're a Yaakov. Never forget you're a Yaakov. Rabotai, look at the word Yaakov. Look at the name Yaakov. How is it spelled? Yod, Ayin, Kuf, Bet. Take the Yod, separate it from the Ayin, Kuf, Bet. What does Ayin, Kuf, Bet mean? Aikiv. What does that mean, Aiki? It means the heel. It means the heel of the shoe. It means nothing. What is the Yod? Yud ke vav ke Hashem. In front of the Yod, you're really Akiv. Look at your name. Your name should teach you a lot about yourself and your life. Your name is Yaakov. Never forget. Yes, you will rise up to Yisrael some days. But never forget you're still Yaakov. In front of the Yod in your life, in front of the Hashem in your life, you're still an Akiv. 
What is there to be haughty about? What is there to be so arrogant about? In front of the Yod of Shashem, you're still an Akiv. He says, Velo yikareshim chai Yaakov, rak Yisrael yeshemecha more gadlut abodat Hashem, veshim chai Yaakov anava lo tazub in Mecca. But make sure the name Yaakov, always remember, before you leave your house, look at the mirror and say, I am a Yaakov. Maybe today I will learn a lot of Torah. Maybe today I will give a lot of tzedakah. Maybe today I will get a promotion in my job. Maybe today all the employees will finally listen to me. But never forget, I am still a Yaakov. I am still, I still subjugate myself to Hashem. I still have to be anava, have humbleness. I have to still have modesty in my life. So what's the problem exactly, Rabotai? We know that the biggest enemy we have in our life is not Sarosh al Isav. It's not the Malach of Isav. The biggest enemy we have in our life is not the Isav himself, but the Yisrara. The evil inclination, he always rears his ugly head every single parashah rabotai. He won't give up until today, 5,781, well he's actually older, 5,781 years, he's still trying to bring us down. And especially in this Ga'ava, I'd like to tell you a story, what happens with Napoleon Bonaparte. Napoleon, when he was going in, on his journey, on his mission, on his project to rule, to capture all the different cities, countries, he reached a certain town and everyone knew, you know, Napoleon comes, comes over here, you know, we all have to come and greet him. They all came out, the women, the children, the men. And amongst all the people that came out was a school teacher that taught, uh, taught Aleph Bet Gimadale to the kids, Kiri'ah. He comes and greets him. Now when Napoleon is passing by with his entourage and everything, everyone's standing like, you know, like this, you know, with fear, trepidation in front of Napoleon. But you have the school teacher, he's smiling. And Napoleon looks at him, it's okay, fine. The entourage leaves, and that's it, the end of the day. The next day, the school teacher gets a knock on his door. Excuse me, uh, we'd like to have a few words with you. Okay, where do you come from? The IRS, where are you from exactly? Let's go to Napoleon's uh, castle. Okay, well, what did I do exactly? Fine. He gets to Napoleon, Napoleon says, that smirk, I will never forget that smirk. I will never forget that smile. Why are you smiling? Why did you smile yesterday when, you, when I passed by you? Excuse me, don't you know who I am? Don't you know you have to walk in front of me or I have to walk in front of you and when you see me, you have to be in, in fear and awe of the, of the great Napoleon? He says, I, I, I can't tell you. What? Now, if he was angry before, he's even more angry now. He says, you can't tell me? Do you know who I am? He says, I can't tell you because if I tell you, you'll kill me. He says, I'm going to kill you either way. He says, but I'd rather die and not tell you. He says, you know what? I promise you. I promise you. You tell me and I won't kill you. Tell me exactly why you were smiling yesterday. So the school teacher tells him like this. He says, every day after I leave the school, I walk back home and I pass by a farm and I see a shepherd and not only does he have sheep, but he has cows, he has different animals and I always wonder and I always say to myself, I mean the cows with one kick, they could, they could, he could fly with one kick. How are the cows so subservient and so subjugated to this one shepherd? It doesn't make any sense. But yesterday when you passed by, Everything made sense to me. So Napoleon says, what exactly are you talking about? He says, you know why the cows, none of the cows revolt? Or none of the, none of the cows kick the shepherd? Because the cow says, I can't do it alone. I need the other cow to do it with me. And the other cow says, I can't do it alone. I need the, the other cow. So everyone thinks that they're the only one in the whole thing. And that's why they didn't do anything. Because nobody wants to be alone. Everyone wants uh, an entourage. Everyone wants a group. To revolt. The same thing with you, Napoleon, my master. You think all your, gen all your, your troops, all your soldiers, they love you? A lot of them don't love you. A lot of them hate you. And they want to see you gone. But what happens? The soldier says, I can't do it alone. I need the other one. And the other one says, I can't do it alone. So everyone thinks they're the only one in the whole thing. And nobody ends up revolting. So you answer my question. That's why I was smiling. It's okay. Rabotai, that's the mashal. That's the mashal. What's the nimshal? You know, it says in the pasuk, Vayivater Yaakov levado 
ויאבק איש עמו עד עלות השחר. יעקב אבינו was left alone. What happens when he's left alone? Right away, the sar of Esav, the evil angel of Esav comes to hit Yaakov. The rabbis tell us, if you ever feel in life that you are by yourself, that's when the biggest problems happen in life. If you think that Hashem is not there, He has your back, He's always behind you, helping you against the evil inclination, helping you overcome all your evil character traits, your ga'ava, your ka'as, everything evil that you have in life. If you think that, if you think you're levado, you'll have a lot of problems with your with your evil inclination. Be careful. A Jew is never alone. A Yehudi always has Hashem helping him. What does it say in the Pasuk? When he felt that he was alone, it's a remez, of course. But whenever a Yehudi, Yaakov, whenever he feels, I'm alone, I can't do it, that's when the problems happen. If you see that sometimes you have these bad character traits and you can't do it alone, you're right, you really can't do it alone. You need Hashem's help. Listen to what the rabbis say. Ha Yehudi margish shehu levad ubodeid mul ha-yetzer. He feels all alone. How can, how can I overcome him? Ve la-yetzer yesh kol ka kharbe kelim shehu mishtamesh bahem negdi. And he has so many tricks up his sleeve, he could, he could defeat me in a, in a second the evil inclination. Ulam ha-emet, hi ki bore olam yahad immo ve'al ha-adam leha-amin, you must believe, ki bore olam omed le-sido, umsayeya lo le-natsayah et yitzro ara' ve'yachod yuchal alav. You can defeat him, like we said in Parashat Toledot, like we said in Parashat Vayetze, in Hayya Sarah, that's the whole theme throughout these parashiyot. Hashem does not expect you to do this alone. Yes, sometimes we all have haughtiness. We all have arrogance. We all have bad things we're doing. But Hashem doesn't expect you to do it alone. Hashem is there to help you. And what's your name? Yaakov, as we said. But what's your, what's your name when you follow Hashem's ways? Yisrael. What does the word Yisrael have inside of it? El. Aleph Lamed is Hashem, which means Hashem is inside of you. Hashem is inside of you. When you, when, you, when you ask Hashem for help, and you plug into that name Israel, then Hashem is inside of you. Hashem says, oh, you asked for my help? Israel, El is going to help you. But sometimes we forget it, like we said. And that's why, where did Sarosh al Asaf hit Yaakov Abinu? He hit him in his, in his hip. The socket, he... What's the right word I'm looking for, Freddy? He twisted or he... Uh, in, he bruised or he, he, took this, he took the whole hip out of its socket. Dislocated. That's what I'm looking for. Thank you. That's the word I'm looking for. He dislocated his whole hip. Rabotai, the rabbis tell us, I got this from a rabbi in Israel, Rabbi Itai ben Aharon. He says, Yerech. Yerech is the hip. Yerech is a shetebot, yod, is yam. Resh is rakia. Chaf is kise. He brings it from the Shlach Kadosh. What does yam rakia kise mean? There's a Gemara Masechet Menachot Daf Mem Gimel Amud Bet. Tanya Haya Rabbi Meir Omer. Ma nishtana techeled mikol mines b'onim. Why do we have to put techeled in our seat? One strand, one string of techeled, mi penesh techeled, because this color techeled, doma la yam. Looks like the, the sea. The yam, dome la rakia. And the sea, the same color as the rakia, as the heavens. The rakia, la kiseha kavod. The rakia is the same color, or it will remind you, or will make you remember, kiseha kavod, the throne of glory. So you have the yam, rakia, kise, in the word yarech, yarech, or hip. What does that mean he was saying over here? He says, if lest you think you're ever alone, and you forget the yam rakia kise, which means your thoughts can penetrate all the way up to the kise akabod. You can reach the high heavens. You can reach up to kise akabod. Your neshama, where did neshama come from? Hatsuba mitahat kise akabod. Hashem brought your neshama all the way from under His throne of glory. You're a very special person. For for a second, if you forget the yerech, if you forget where you come from, the yam rakia kise, where does the satan hit you? He will hit you in the sat in the yerech. He will bring you down. If you ever feel you're alone and you don't have Hashem's help, that's when, that's when the Satan or the evil inclination will bring you down. 
We'll end off with, do, with these two stories, Rabotai. There was a ma'aseh. And actually, we'll end off with one story because I see we have no time. But just to let you know, or just for us to, to remember that we're never alone. We always have to ask Hashem's help in everything in life. Ya'akub Abinu, yes, he was going out to a milhama for Isav. He, he prepared for milhama. He prepared for a gift. He also prepared for tefillah because without tefillah, we can't do anything. There was a lady that she called up the Hebra Kadisha to inform them that her husband passed away. Okay, they come to the house and they see the husband passed away. No alenu. And they prepare for the levaya. She didn't have so many, so much money, so many funds. They were immigrants from Russia, but they collected money and they were finally able to get him a burial spot, a burial place. And right before they put him in the spot to bury him, the lady says, oh, one second, one second. A few words of uh, hesped. You will judge my husband. They say, no problem, but we don't, we don't even know your husband. She said, okay, so no problem. I'll stand up. I'll stand up and you will judge my husband. So now they're wondering, well, what, could she, what could she finally say you know, now by the, by the burial? So she says like this, Rabotai, listen, listen to the words. Herschel, Herschel. Ata ole akshav le bedin shel ma'ala. Herschel, my husband, you are now going and you're going to stand up next to the heavenly court. Vada yesh belibcha hashash. Of course, you have a suspicion inside your heart. Shemayit be'u otcha. Of course they're going to ask you, how come you didn't have any children? Peru Urbu, the first mitzvah of the Torah. The second mitzvah of the Torah. The first mitzvah of the Torah. Therefore I'm telling you, my dear husband, you have nothing to be worried about. You Forty years in Russia, my dear husband, we did not have a mikveh. And therefore, I wasn't able to come with you, to be next to you. And we finally reach Eres Israel. I was an old lady. I couldn't have kids. Therefore, don't worry. They won't do anything for you, anything to you in Beit Shel Ma'ala. You didn't touch me for 40 years. And finally, when you were able to touch me and have kids with me, he, we weren't able to have kids anymore. Rabotai, the story ends that the Hebra Kadisha couldn't stop crying and weeping from, from the, the innocent words or these few words from the lady. Rabotai, you understand what we're dealing over here? You see what a Yehudi is? You see what Yehudi is? A Yehudi understands that no matter what, Hashem is always by my side. No matter what, Hashem is always with me. I couldn't have kids 40 years. Okay, I'm going to stand up in the heavenly court. I have to worry about that? Of course not. Because Hashem, I fulfilled your Torah. The same Torah that said I couldn't be with my husband. That's your Torah that I, that's your Torah that I fulfilled. So what am I worried about? Rabbi you see what Yaakov Abinu is saying right in the beginning of the parasha? V'tariag mitzvot shamarti isav. If you were to think, why am I sending you that message? Why am I sending you that I have 613 mitzvot? Because no matter what happens to me in life, I know that I have the 613 mitzvot by my side. They have my back as they say. They protect me from everything in life. And I can use that the Beit Din Shel Ma'ala. Yeah, maybe you have two mitzvot. Maybe you're going to use that against me. But no, I have 613 mitzvot. The question is, how did exactly he had 613 mitzvot, right? He didn't have Eretz Israel. He had mitzvot he couldn't keep. That's a different class. That's why he doesn't say kiyamti. He says shamarti. Tarek mitzvot shamarti. That's for a different class. Shamarti. Again, that's a different concept. Yaakov says, I have the Torah. I have the mitzvot. I have that by my side. And if we understand that, Rabbotai, that's the only thing that we have in life we could be holy about have arrogance with. The only thing is Torah Kedusha, that we come from Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. That's what Yaakov Abinu is teaching us. And therefore, we don't have to be worried from Isav or anything resembling Isav or the evil inclination because we always have something to protect us. I thank you all for attending every Wednesday night, Avenue S, the corner of East 9th 
8 p.m. HaLebanon, and Nathan wants to remind us that Mosei Shabbat, we say, Barech Alenu. Thank you, Nathan Tao, for reminding us. Thank you to our anytime viewers and listeners, J.U.D. viewers and listeners. Baruch Adonai Le'olam. Amen. Ve'amen. Rebihayin